I want room service. I want the club sandwich. I want the cold Mexican beer. I want the $10,000 a night hooker. I want my shirts laundered like they do at the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo. Welcome to the Pixel Pop Movie Podcast. I'm your host for this episode, Toby. With me, I'm joined by Lucas Mnemonic with the wet wire. All right, you know it. <laughs> and the living in the dirty streets of a cyberpunk future, Ethan. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, but you're right. <laughs> but this is Brisbane. <laughs> true, I'm true. Walking around at the minute. Yeah. That's uh, that's a, perhaps a little bit of an obscure quote, actually. That's from uh, Johnny Mnemonic, which I watched last night, and I I held up my hand in all honesty. I had no idea until I watched it that the movie takes place January 17, 2021. How funny is that? Complete <laughs> complete fluke. I'd been meaning to watch it for ages, and then there was nothing on last night. I'm like, I'm going to watch Johnny Mnemonic. And then the screen came up in the show showing the date, and I was like, wow, what are the odds? I should buy a lotto ticket. What kind of future bullshit is this? Right. It's a terrible movie. It's a bad movie, but it's kind oh, of... No, I've never fun. seen it. It's, it's kind not, of fun. It's not... Yeah, it's dumb fun. Like, it's not... Te- it's it's it's, it's not... It's not amazingly written, <laughs> but it's entertaining, and you get, you get... It's not like you waste your time watching it. Good movie, though. I like it. We've got a bunch of news to get through uh, for this episode. Thankfully, things are starting to to spin back up, despite COVID still being a huge problem globally. Uh, things are starting to oh, spin yeah. back up, which is good. Um, we've been uh, watching a little bit of TV. We're going to be doing some spoiler-free WandaVision on the first two episodes. Uh, and then our topic of conversation for this episode is uh, you know, the most anticipated movies of 2021. And thankfully, uh, the Rotten Tomatoes website's put together a really comprehensive list that it, a couple of days ago that includes a lot of stuff that was meant to come out last year that's now come out this year. So we're sort of going to bang through that and hopefully get you salivating for some of the things that are uh, coming out this year. Uh, but before we dive into all that, we're going to do news. And normally I'd hand it over to Ethan, but he's actually uh, stuck in quarantine. Uh, he's in a hotel right now, which is why his voice yeah. sounds a bit different. So he doesn't have his laptop and whatever have you. So I'm going to guide you through the news tonight. We will still argue over it. Same old, same old. <laughs> Some things never change. Yeah, so I'm not as organized as Ethan, so I'm just going to bang down this list uh, as it appears. So uh, first up, Mike Flanagan says there are no plans for more haunting seasons. So uh, haunting of Bly Manor, haunting of Hill House at this stage. Which is a bit of a shame, because they were fairly good. I think the, the Hill House was better than Bly Manor, depending on what you were looking for. But yeah. never say never, I guess. But I mean, yeah. he's already working on his other TV show called The yes. Night Mass. So they could already, like, you know, it, it'll probably be in the same sort of vein in a little in, in a way. I'm pretty sure two of the people from Haunting are also coming across to that, too, if I'm not Oh, there's like, there's like three or four people from Haunting that are going to be in there. Yeah, because I know it's the, um, it's the, main, the main girl from um, Bly Manor. And then it's um, the guy that was like he was also in the Invisible Man. I can't think of his name, but he was also in both. Seasons yeah, of, of, but you also have well. Katie Siegel, or whatever her name is, because that's his wife. And Rahul Coley's in Midnight Mass as well, and he was in so, Black Manor. Now this is pretty staggering. Richard Donner, Dick Donner, the legendary director, is set to direct a new Lethal Weapon movie with himself aged at 91 years old. Just give it up, bro. Nah, man. I- I'd say the same thing to George Miller if George Miller was still trying to direct Mad Max movies at 91. Just nah, give it up. Nah, go hard. Go hard. Well, apparently apparently, um, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover are both returning for this new adventure as well. So uh, so apparently Lucas is, has been down the local pub and got a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more, say no more. And there's a rumor going around that we might see Black Widow going to Disney Plus premiere access on April 30. Yeah, this is interesting. So this kind of, I, I found it in the in the bowels of Reddit and I, I went and actually like verified it and looked myself. There's a there's a website that does like electronic press kits um, for films and stuff. And one of them happened to not be locked um, behind like walls and like firewalls and stuff. And one of them happened to be Black Widow. And it had all this stuff for, for yeah, coming to Disney Premiere Access on April 30. So it's going to be interesting if, if they really do it because they said they've been very notorious for saying you know everything marvel's going to the cinema because they know they can make bank off it mm. and um even mulan like mulan was going to get pushed out and they decided at last minute now nah, let's let's just try this and see if it works and based on the fact that they're not have said they're not doing it for widow i'm assuming mulan must have been a failure 
But yeah, there's um things that kind of I think too, let's be honest, like COVID changes stuff a weekly, if not daily basis, so I imagine they've probably got this sort of stuff in place in case things go really bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, and if sure. they don't need to from I said so for what I remember Mulan made about two hundred and fifty million in its first week. Whereas usually for a Marvel movie you're looking at fucking opening day or weekend. So Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's one day's make. Yeah. If you've had your head on the ground for a while, you probably wouldn't have heard about uh, some of the problems going on between Ray Fisher and uh, Warner Brothers slash DC. And uh, in the latest news, Justice League star Ray Fisher slams Walter Hamada, cyborg actor, quote, will not participate, end quote, in any films associated with the DC boss. So this is just getting from bad to worse to on fire into falling off a cliff. Um, obviously, uh, Mr. Fisher's... Uh, had a lot of problems uh, in filming the Justice League movie and has a bone to pick with certain persons and I'm sure he has his reasons but uh, sadly this is Hollywood and unfortunately I don't know what contracts to replace but I mean if you can replace um, old mate in uh, War Machine in, in Iron Man then you're probably going to replace Cyborg I would think especially with this no, thing it this, came out the other day that it's not getting this, recast. He's just been written out of the Flash movie. Yeah, I was about to say there's been a lot of between between this this piece of news and and today, there's been a lot that's come out. Ray Fisher actually released um, parts of a phone call he had with uh, someone that was investigating the claims, saying that basically all his claims were credible and people that they interviewed and people and, and his interviews were all credible and they, they were going to be looking at it and then. That was days before they announced that they were dropping it, like the whole investigation, because of his interference. A lot of other stuff has come out between now and then. It's, it's all really messy at the moment, so... What else we got? We've got uh, Peter Jackson is working on a Beatles biopic entitled The Beatles Get Back. Seems to be a bit of a trend at the moment. We had the, um, you know, the Elton John flick, and then we've got the David Bowie flick coming, and now we're getting a Beatles flick. I'm all for this it. Is very, this is very different, though. This is... Um, where those are like biopics. This is like actual footage from the recording of like the end of their career um, he's basically repurposing it and telling a story with it right okay yeah well there's a, yeah. a trailer there for some... it or a sneak peek for it so we'll, we'll put that in the article that goes with this podcast but i will say if you're a beatles fan there is some incredible footage in this it's a lot of it is like the abbey road era like it's it's the back end of their careers but like they're just farting around in the studio just shits and giggles type shot like type stuff it's just yeah. It's amazing to to because you forget sometimes that they're and you do this with a lot of musicians, but you forget that a lot of musicians are people. But like, there's one part where like they're just like shit talking Ringo for like three minutes. <laughs> like it's funny. Like they're just cracking jokes and and you know having a cigarette while um I think it was John Lennon was like playing the piano and yeah it's, yeah just just farting around and you know hey this is a cool riff how does this sound and you know it's it's it's. Apparently it's like, yeah, 55 hours worth of footage. So Peter it Jackson sounds like it might more that. be kind of a follow-up for, for Jackson with, with film restoration after he did the uh, the World War piece. You know what? It's it's very similar. Like, mm. again, he's he's gone through 55 hours worth of footage to try and cut it down into a two-hour story that yeah. tells the end of the Beatles. Uh, some good news. Uh, Kevin Feig has confirmed that Deadpool 3 will be an R-rated film. And if I'm not mistaken, that will be the first R-rated MCU film as well. That is correct. So that's good. That's giving yeah. the fans what they want. I think isn't Ryan Reynolds overseeing a lot of it as well? Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is um, working with the because we've already talked about this previously. The writers, writers. from Burgers, they're all kind of working together to to put together a script. And it sounds like it's going to be very within and also very outside of the MCU at the same time. Morbius with Jared Leto has been delayed. Uh, it's sorry though. The list that we're going to bang off later on in this episode is accurate uh, to re represent that change. It was meant to be March nineteenth. It's now coming out October eighth uh, in North America. So yeah, it, it's which just... kind of makes me wonder if Venom two is going to get delayed more because that's supposed to be at the moment. Yeah, Venom, Venom, yeah. Be in June. Yeah, yeah total carnage June. due that sooner. Yeah, so that might get delayed. Possibly, I, it's. I think again, like I said, it's just going to depend on COVID. Shit, chase changes yeah, weekly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as well, like that's kind of the start of um blockbuster season. Willow sequel show, the, the TV show that we, we knew was coming, uh, has lost its director John M. Chu over filming schedule problems. What did so. he do? He was he did something recently. He did a Fast and Furious. 
Oh, he did Tokyo Drift, didn't he? Yeah. Not a big loss. <laughs> what? <laughs> ben so, Affleck is stepping back into uh, director's role, which uh, doesn't bother me. I thought he did Argo very well. And do you remember down. the controversy around Argo too, where it won like every freaking award except for best director? Yep. That was disgusting. Anyway, uh, he's coming sure. back to do a Disney movie called Keeper of the Lost Cities. Um, Have they given any news on what this is actually about, or is it just? Because it's a book series, right? Yeah. Uh, let me have a look. I, I imagine he's probably just doing it for his kids, though, as well. Uh, book series upon which Affleck's new Disney film is based was penned by Shannon Messenger, beginning with the 2012's Keeper of the Lost Cities, it continues until 2020's Unlocked. The story follows a 12-year-old girl named Sophie Foster who has the ability to read minds and discovers that she is actually from a parallel universe. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. But it'll be Disney-ish, so, you know... Yeah, I mean, as long as they don't pull an Artemis Fowl, I think it should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, uh, Kevin Feige has revealed that Marvel's Moon Knight series will be six episodes. Yeah, so, basically, Kevin Feige's dropped a whole bunch of info about how the shows and stuff are moving forward. He actually, I think he did an interview with Collider? I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I think I, it was I, Collider. I, I watched it, but basically he said that the focus is, is that each series is going to be essentially a six-hour story. How they split the episodes up, is going to depend on on the type of show it is and, and all that kind of things. He's outright come out and confirmed that She-Hulk is going to be 10 half an hour episodes or like maybe a little bit longer than half an hour each. Yeah, um, I did to put it here yeah. too. What's interesting is WandaVision is starting with shorter episodes and then ending up with longer episodes. Yes, so, yes, the, so... The, first, the first six episodes are going to be six different sitcoms. We won't get into it because that's it's kind of spoilery. Yes. But the, the first six episodes are going to be half hour sitcoms that will culminate in a three episode event that will be essentially it, the last three episodes will feel like a will feel like an end game type thing of like mm. the last three hours will pay off everything that's come before it in yeah. terms of what what is in WandaVision. Yeah, well, we'll come back to that when we do our spoiler free, but yeah. Yeah. It's just just pointing out there is you like we're saying like there's a lot of flexibility in these these run times and how they're doing things and don't expect one Disney Plus show to be the same as the next. Yeah, well, he did as well say that Falcon and Winter Soldier and Loki are going to be six hour long episodes. Six hour long episodes. Yeah. Uh, you know, Miss Marvel. They, I think he said was going to be like they're going to be a bit shorter, so it may be like eight forty five minute episodes. Like it's, mm. they're not really locked in. Like kind of like what Mandalorian was. Like there was a couple of Mandalorian episodes that were only a half an hour, but then there were some that were like 65, 70 minutes. So like, just they're not really time locked it in. takes to tell the story. How, yeah, however long it takes to take time it takes to tell the story is what they're going to go for. However, specifically with One Division, the first six episodes are going to be basically half hour sitcoms yeah. that will culminate into an event. Hey, so, Lucas. Yeah. Guess what? What? Harry Lennox confirms he's the Martian Manhunter in the Snyder Cup. Yes! <laughs> we knew it. We did. We knew it. We knew it. We knew it. But well, I mean, he also did say it, but we knew it. But yes, I'm very excited. Give it to me now. Give it to me right now. Yep. Uh, well, we've got a little bit longer to wait for that. But uh, when, when is when is Snyder Cup? Now that it's a movie, what's going March. on? Do we have dates? It's about March, apparently. Okay. Something in March. It's, it's, it's Q1 this year. Right, well, speaking of March, some good news for both you lads. Godzilla vs. Kong has actually moved its uh, release date forwards, which is something a little yes. unusual this day and age. Coming forward to March 26th instead of May 21st in theatres, and it'll also be streaming on HBO Max. Give me a trailer right we now. Have a tra We've had like a little <laughs> snippet of footage that I sent Lucas yesterday, and that's it. Yeah, it was the HBO Max, a HBO yeah. Max 2021 trailer. Where at the start of it, I think they were like, were they on like aircraft carriers or something? Yeah, yeah. Godzilla and Kong are both on an aircraft carrier, and Godzilla punch, no, Kong punches Godzilla in the face, and they're the same height. Yeah, and they're both in the water. <laughs> it looks nuts. But we need a trailer, like, right now. Now that they've moved this up, they're going to have to fast track a whole marketing campaign for this. Yeah. Now, I want you to put on your tinfoil hats, because there's some conspiracy theory uh, coming your way. Apparently. Asterix, asterix, asterix. Chris Evans is in chats to return to the role of Captain America in the MCU for a future Marvel project. Yeah, so... Even, even he, like, tweeted out, like, oh, this is news to me. He yeah. did, but that still doesn't, you know... Yeah, he's, I don't I don't think he will. To be honest, I, I, I feel like, no. He's He, he pretty much he left because he, he, he was done with it, really. Yeah, he's a company man. I think that he would deny it until an official confirmation comes out. But in saying that, though, I could see him become 
the new Nick Fury. If they were to do something like that, he would be... It's pretty broad, the, though, because, I mean, MCU could include, like, an animated feature in, say, a What If Season 2. Yeah. Uh, you know what I it mean? It could be anything right now. It could be any. I know he'd been eyeing off some directorial roles, but this is specifically saying Captain America, not, you know, directing. I, I think anything he does do is probably going to be fairly minor. Well, Having said that, I would still give my left nut for a Howling Commandos TV series. The the headline does specifically state Captain America eyes return, not mm. he is coming back as Captain America. So again, you know, it could be anything. It could be, yeah, it could be, a, could be a creative could, could be a creative role. It could be him playing Steve Rogers. Um, it could be him maybe doing a flashback as a Captain America thing in a could future movie. Could be him movie. as old Steve for a scene uh, with Falcon okay. Winter Soldier. Or yeah, something. possibly they they could they could do old man Steve like yeah, like I said. There's there's many 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 things they could be doing. So. Yeah. Uh, what they can be doing uh, is watching Mortal Kombat, which will be releasing soon. We've had some uh, oh. co confirmation that it's R-rated, and uh, we've had some some shots, some photos from the, the movie come out now, um, showing a fair bit of gore. There's a few new characters. We also get to see Sub-Zero, Jax, Sonya, I think we've got there. Kano! Kano. Kano, Not, yep. Josh Lawson. Josh Lawson looks crazy as Kano. I did not like that casting at all. And then that first photo of him with like, like they've they've changed the design a little bit of like the eye, and I'm fine with that because like it, that design looks dated now. But man, like he is buff and he's got like the beard and he looks dirty and like that totally does not. It's a complete 180 for him in terms of like what type of character he plays. Like he's always the nerdy, button up kind of guy. He's not the the, the fighter or even remotely violent so this like just the one picture of him i'm automatically sold i was just happy to see that it's still gonna have like the fantasy element because there were rumors going around a while back that it wasn't gonna have that at all yeah but well, obviously... we, we can see a picture of sub-zero with what looks to be some sort of blade made of well ice. yeah and so... luke kang has fireballs in his hand so it's like okay they're doing yeah. that cool anyway like sounds like it's gonna be awesome like yep all the way in plus james wan can't go wrong so we've got a little more uh, Moon Knight news, and that is Ethan Hawke has been cast as the series villain, or main villain, to the show. Give it to me. This is fine. This is fine. Give it to me. Yes. Like I said, you had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. <laughs> now, we had Tom Holland asked... being a little cheeky on Twitter and dropping some hints, and we weren't quite sure what it was for. It turns out uh, it's a trailer for the new Russo's movie, uh, Cherry, which will be coming to Apple TV+. Plus. I didn't watch this trailer yet, did you, gents? Yes. Yeah, good. Yeah. I did it though. It looks amazing. Like, people could say that whole, like, preacher movie that he did for Netflix was different. This is very different. Like, he's a bad dude. And yeah. he feels naturally like a bad dude. Like, it's it looks awesome. Yeah, big year um, for him, because we should also hopefully get... Um, uh, well, it's this. Nathan it's this. Drake. It's un Uncharted, Uncharted Spider-Man. Spider-Man 3, yeah. Uh, and he's got another movie coming out too, doesn't he? He's got, he's got four movies this year. Oops, I'm pretty right. sure. He's in, he's in hot but, demand. Yeah, he's one of the biggest, like, yeah, he's got the biggest demand in Hollywood right now. Especially yeah. with how young he is. But no, this, I would definitely recommend going out of your way to check this trailer out. Have a guess who's in Sydney right now. Dave Batista. I wish, but... Vin, no. Vin Diesel. Well, no, 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 Dave Batista isn't. Dave, Dave Batista is. Vin Diesel's in. in. There's a bunch and of Karen, And Karen Gillan as well. Karen Gillan's there. And but Matt, someone else. And Matt Damon. And Matt Chris Damon. Pratt. And they're all in They're all in Sydney for uh, Thor Love and Thunder. So they're all hanging out at Hemsey's place. So I wonder. So and a Byron. Yeah, and Byron, right? Well, it's pretty well known that Matt Damon is um, really good friends with Chris Hemsworth to the point where he got the cameo in Ragnarok. It just doesn't know who he's playing. Uh, and it's I probably think, another cameo, right? Well, You'd I think. think it's an excuse I to get on the piss in Byron Bay. So, the, well, the, yeah, well, there's that. <laughs> I have a, I don't know why, but I have a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky feeling he's going to be better at Bill. I don't know what it is, but I feel like he's going to, because there's no way, like, and I, I know we said this last time when Matt Damon showed up in, in Ragnarok, right? <clears throat> like, there's no way they'd pull him back just to do another cameo in the middle of a pandemic. He's got to be doing a bigger role. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. And the only, like, the only character they haven't really cast yet that it sounds like they're going to be doing is is Better Ray Bill. And Matt Damon, until that news where he broke that he was flying into Sydney for Thor, 
no one even knew about it. Right. So he's he's going to have some secret role. And I, I think if they're going to do it in England, they're going to probably do better a bill, which would be very interesting for him. Well, lastly, I need you to put your tinfoil hats back on. Uh, and the word is on the street that uh, Daredevil star Charlie Cox has reportedly finished filming his scenes for Spider-Man 3. Which says yeah, to me no, that obviously isn't a very big role. No word whether or not he's playing Matt Murdock or if he's playing Daredevil. Yeah, nothing. And in fact, he, well, Fagan and others have not even said confirmed he's in the film at all. Yes. So um, everything's denied. Denied, 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 denied. But obviously but, there's a lot of eyes and we live in a world of social media. It's very hard to keep secrets. Well, they, they, they did probably about two months of filming in sound stages in Atlanta. And now they're doing on street stuff. So he could have filmed like a decent amount already in the sound stage. True, true, true. true and and, and no, no one can get footage of that either. Like some photos came out today because they were filming out on the streets. People got that, and that's released online of um, Tom Holland and Zendaya and all them on set. But because yeah. it's all on the sound stage, no one can get those. I've seen the new suit. It's pretty much the same as the old one. Yeah, it is. Oh, I haven't seen the new suit. It's, 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 it's the same as the old one. Yeah, it's not very different. Yeah. Apparently, it's like some minor change to it. But. <laughs> So, cool. But yeah, all right. So that's it for news. Now we're going to touch on what we've been watching lately, and I probably the bulk of this is going to be uh, two two subjects, spoiler free. Uh, one's going to be Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four, and the other one is going to be Wonder Vision episodes one and two. Let's start with Wonder Woman. Uh, have you gentlemen seen the film? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We went so, we went to the and saw it together. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's been a fortnight, and so it's probably still a little bit too fresh to do spoilers, but what did you think? Yeah, I thought it was alright. It, it felt a bit cheesy in quite a few moments, though. Like, Yeah, I feel that's probably intentional, like, though, because it's well, the Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I feel like it, it was definitely, like, callbacks to Linda Carter cheesiness. Mm, yeah. But uh, it wasn't bad. It was good. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hate it. Yeah, yeah, I know like, what you mean. Yeah, there's there's parts of it that were very heavy-handed. I think it was, it was a mean? little bit slow. It probably could have been shortened just a scotch. Yeah, I've I've heard a lot of people saying they could have cut Pedro Pascal's character out altogether, and he would have got the same film, which I don't think is true. Mm, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say, like, as a young man when I was about six, you know, I grew up with Superman and, and Batman, and I remember watching Christopher Reeve's Superman, and it, it was quite a long film. It still is. And that was sort of really inspirational for me as a, as a kid growing up. And when I was watching Wonder Woman, I'm watching it going, it's not, this is not a bad film, but this is not for me. I can imagine uh, being a, a six to eight year old girl watching that film and it is going to empower the shit out of you. It is the sort of film that you're going to buy on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever streaming service this day and age and you're just going to watch it over and over again. because, And then you're going to go buy a Wonder Woman outfit and you're going to fly around the backyard in your invisible jet and... It's gonna. That's gonna be your film. You know what I mean? Like it's gonna be your your inspiration, your motivation. Much like Christopher Reeve was for me back when I was a little kid. Yeah, for sure. And I'm more so, I think, than the first Wonder Woman. To be honest, I, for something, for some reason about it, this one just resonated more with me. I just feel it was very, yeah, sort of sent that empowering message, but without being too in your face about it. You know what I mean? Like it, it was, you could just watch it and go, she's a strong woman and there's nothing wrong with that. I was a little worried at first when the first scene had the, the, and I'm not going to the spoilers, but there's some robbers and they're all boy, male and they're all idiots. And I'm like, oh, let's not do one of these movies where every man in the movie is an idiot kind of thing. But that wasn't the case at all. It's, that's not that case at all. So if you're sort of wondering about or worrying that if it's going to be some sort of agenda thrown in your face, that's not it at all in this film. But I definitely feel it's, it's going to empower young women young ladies girls really you know pre-teens and that's not a bad thing because we had our spider-man and we, and we had our superman and we've got man 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 and we had our you know batman time for some woman <laughs> yeah like yeah like uh, yeah you're, you're basically right i yeah. know what i want to say i just can't think of the words right now but you're yeah. basically basically what you're saying is is kind of what I, i'm thinking at the same time yeah if you're not an eight-year-old girl it's not a bad film if you're an eight-year-old girl, I think this is going to be an amazing film. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't mind it. It doesn't really do anything for Justice League in that sense. It doesn't really... It really just... I mean, it shows a bit more pain of what the character has to go through, but I don't think it really feeds into Justice League or what's coming in the future in any any way, shape or form. 
will say the one thing that, that, that annoyed me, not necessarily the film, but it's a lot like the criticism of the film, right? Is that people were saying kind of as it was coming out and, and they were like, it was boring because it felt like it had no stakes. And like, that's, that's a prequel movie. That's every prequel movie because the character needs to end up somewhere because we've seen what happens to them after. Mm. Like you're kind of setting it up to have no stakes. You know what I mean? You yeah. know, it's, people, and I feel like the same criticism is going to be leveled at Black Widow when that comes out. Yeah, and yeah. You could argue, you could, you could have argued the same criticism for um, the original Wonder Woman film. Like again, there's no stakes because you know she's going to end up in 2016, and she's going to be splitting up Batman and Superman from fighting. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah that's that's exactly. that's, the, that's, the, that's really the only main thing that annoyed me. Yeah, no, it, it was it's it's worth a watch. It's 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 worth a watch. I've I've certainly watched a lot worse, and I know. For my wife, who grew up watching Wonder Woman, the TV show with Linda Carter, you know, Wonder Woman was was a big inspiration for her as a young woman growing up. So I know she enjoyed this film probably more than me uh, as well because it's one of her favorite characters. It'd be like it'd be like an average, you know, Captain America movie coming out or something like that, and I'd be like, yeah, but it's Captain America. I'm gonna watch it anyway. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm gonna have rose tinted glasses. Yeah, for sure. That nostalgia's kind of kind of kicked yeah. in. Yeah, so it definitely kicked in for her. Yeah, go and see it. Go and see it. Uh, right, spoiler free. One division, episodes one and two. A lot of negative stuff I've seen banging around online regarding this. I think some people are just not getting it. Yeah, I'll say it's probably what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think people weren't expecting the sitcom, even though we knew it was going to be a sitcom. I just think it wasn't go like no one was expecting it who didn't know what they were going to in into already. Because yeah. even though like the trailer kind of gives that stuff away, it, at the same time it kind of doesn't. Because you also get the things of like <clears throat> the sh like the shots of um Wu, like Agent Wu and and Darcy and the stuff that's kind of happening outside and Vision flying around in color and stuff. Like people, I don't think we're expecting such hard cur like hard turns into the sitcom stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like we said, that's gonna that's all going to pay off by the end of episode six yeah it definitely feels like a um almost like an infinity war uh, kind of scenario where everything starts off light and fluffy and funny and giggles and we're all wonderful and look at us we're superheroes and then shit just goes dark about halfway through i kind of get the feeling that the whole point of the sitcom stuff is to to have you laugh and to have you join in, in the laughter and, and the amusement and set you up it's setting you up for i think shit to go real dark very 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 wrong yeah very exactly dark. i think it's almost like a black mirror you know what i mean yeah that's probably that's a really really good comparison because again like the way that the sitcom stuff is set up and not getting into spoilers but the way that the episodes end um mm, yeah you know that it is a very voyeuristic black mirror type scenario i guess you could i guess you could call it mm. Do you notice too, like the episode's actually only about 20 to 22 minutes and you get about eight minutes of credits. Oh, don't start me on it, bro. I thought there was <laughs> credit scenes at the end of the episode. You know, I, was, I, was, I was fully into it. I was like, all right, cool. Let's watch this. Like, hey, look, there's like eight minutes of this episode left. All right, cool. There's going to be like a post credit scene or something at the end of the episode. This is going to be fucking awesome. And then nothing. <laughs> I got seven minutes of fucking credits to get to like the next episode. It's a crazy like, wow. amount of credits. Crazy amount of credits. Yeah. Just at least yeah. remember to watch the credits for the last episode, because there'll probably be something. I, there. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get so disillusioned with it by the time I get to like episode eight, then I'm gonna be like, you know nah. what? I'm not gonna watch the post credits for last, episode nine. Last episode post credits huge. is gonna be Punisher with a sledgehammer breaking the floor. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. Um. But what have you yeah. thought? What did you think so far? What were your thoughts of the first two episodes without sort of dumping into any spoilers? Who, who are you talking about? Oh, either, oh, either, either. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's it's a nice change of pace to see both of those. Well, actually, a lot of those actors, you know, Catherine Hahn, who you've, you've seen in comedies before, but Paul Bettany, Elizabeth Olsen, and uh, such a fun and like comedic uh, sitcom setting. Like it's it's nice and refreshing. And like I think Paul Bettany does it really fucking good. Like he's got his comedic timings really fucking good for it all. Um, obviously, there's. I think there's an interview where he said he based his performance partially on uh, Hugh Laurie. And also Dick Van Dyke. He yeah. said yeah. Dick Van Dyke yeah. as well. Sort of more classic the... period actors. Yeah. 
yeah, especially the first episode being, you know, of um, Stra- Dick Van Dyke straight show. up rip off of Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm really enjoying it. It's obviously the mystery in the background, and and you know what the trailer entails is coming up. Yeah, there's definitely a lot for... to pick apart and unpack in each episode. There is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you get those those weird moments where you can start to see things coming off the rails, which are really interesting. Mm-hmm. Especially at the end of, well, I can't say it. It's can't say. Like... Can't say it. it's a spoiler. It's a spoiler. But if you also go in and wondering why uh, Wanda isn't speaking with her accent uh that's apparently being addressed or will be addressed uh, in the course of the show as well there's reasons for it it's not it wasn't a mistake she's also she, she's actually come out in an interview and said it so i don't yes. know if we can say it but yeah no she has yes and it's basically yeah, she, yeah the, the simple non-spoiler version is you know it's a sitcom in a very no. real sense was what i was no I read it. and so that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about from Civil War. Well, I mean, there she's is... obviously been in America for a period of time as well, but... No. So no, there's more to it. There's more to it. I don't know how much I should go well, into we... for the podcast, but <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you later, but there is there is a lot more to it. Like, yes. it, like you are right. She has said she took, like, the, the whole um, accent thing is going to be addressed in um, in the in the show, yes. but there is there is intentional reasons as to why she dropped the accent from Civil yeah. War. Actually, I, saw a, and, I saw an image today too from a future episode that looks like we might be seeing uh, a character. And also, apparently, if you look at the Spanish credits for the show, they abs- accidentally drop uh, a spoiler as to another character that's in the show at the moment. I don't know this. Yeah. I haven't, yeah, I haven't I'm not going to yeah, spoil it for I. you. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but uh, it was yeah, an article I read. Off. Yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll let you look it up later, but um, it's it's not revealed in the uh, English credits, but in the Spanish credits, there's a, a particular character who I think is in uh, the second Ant-Man movie, and he is listed there. So, dun dun dun. Now, I haven't spoiled it for you, but if you want to know what it is, you can go and look that up yourself. But yeah, so... Uh, oh, we, we already knew. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, 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 but it, it, it's not. It's if you're just going in blind. You, you know, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. If yeah, you're yeah. going in blind, you wouldn't know. So, just like if you're going in blind, you don't know, you know who's meant to be in that that leaked image of in the shadows. So, well, I was about to say, I I already said the person's name. So. <laughs> no, do it. Anyway, lots of cool stuff happening. Well lots of this. cool stuff happening. Lots of cool stuff coming. And I'm looking forward to because this is really the the beginning of the next phase in every meaningful way. This is where we're going to see the big setup for the you know Spider Man and other films where stuff's going to get a little crazy. So it's going to be cool. So I will, I will. Can I ask without it being a spoiler? Do you think this is Wanda's doing or an external force? External. External. Okay. 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 All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Uh, WandaVision is is dropping episodes weekly, so by the time we get to our next episode of this podcast, hopefully, I have a couple more uh, episodes that we can we can talk about. Looking forward to it. Did you want to do what we're watching? Yeah, I'd say. Did you want to do what we're watching? I don't know if we got time. Do we have time? Yeah, okay. All time of the what? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, just quickly then. Just quickly. And what else have you been watching? Uh, I went to the cinema and watched Monster Hunter. Oh yeah. Okay. How was that? Um. Once you get aside, oh, once you get past all the army stuff, once that's all and done, it's not a bad movie at all. Okay, how close to the uh, game do you feel it was? Uh, pretty damn close. Okay. There's, so, a, there's, there's a lot ripped straight from the game. It's just the army stuff is probably just in there for backstory. Americanize it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and once that's out of the way, then it actually becomes pretty close to the game and it's quite good. Oh, okay. Excellent. That's uh, very I, rare. That's very rare for a Paul W.S. Anderson film. Yeah. Whether or not it'll make a lot of money, I don't know. Let's look at a uh, sequel, but we'll, we'll see. Because I'm in quarantine, I have done nothing but watch stuff over the past week. <laughs> so I have watched... I finished watching Snowpiercer, the first season of that today. I watched all of that. It took me two days. Uh, second season starts in like two weeks, and that was quite good. I watched the Night Stalker documentary on Netflix. I finished that this morning as well. I watched... And, and tell him, tell him, what else did you watch? Hold on, you? hold on. What else did you watch, Ethan? I've watched two seasons of What We Do in the Shadows. That oh, was nice. really good. Yep, it is. It is good. 
And I also watched all three seasons of Cobra Kai. Yeah, he oh, did. Nice, nice. I nice. get a message because I've been telling him. I've been telling him ever since I finished season two to watch it. And he's like, nah, I'm not going to watch it. Dog shit. I would like just would gig me about it. And I'm like, you got to watch it, man. Get a message. <laughs> it's like the screen. It's the screen. Well, you've still got some time left. So you can always catch up with that. Uh, because I don't think you finished The Man in the High Castle, did you? No, I haven't. No, that's not that idea. Yeah, season four, I think you didn't watch. It, it yeah, wasn't, I watched the last one. It wasn't as good as the previous seasons, but it, it finished it off. So it was worth finishing off. Yeah. Uh, All right, uh, Lucas. I watched a fair bit, like which is very rare, I guess, because I haven't had time. But the new season of Letterkenny came out. That was very good. Um, ended very frustratingly, and I don't like it. But the rest of the season was, was very good. Uh, Cobra Kai season three, fucking excellent can't wait for season four i'm so excited for like where that show's going yeah so wonder woman with ethan in the cinemas we've been watching we've been catching up on doctor who oh, yeah. um kind of fell out fell out of that for a little while finished season nine, nine? right eight it was season eight got absolutely ripped apart by the last two episodes <laughs> they were brutal i think that's pretty much it i've just been re-watching random episodes of what's always sunny in philadelphia now so that's taken up the rest of my time when I've not been playing video games. Yeah. All right. So thank you to Rotten Tomatoes for this article. And, uh, you know, we will we'll even, I think we should just link it in an article too. So that uh, considering they've done all the hard work here, you can go over and read it on their site because they updated it the 16th of the first. So it's, it's still very fresh. Uh, we're going to bang through some of these and anything that we really want to comment on, we'll, we'll, we'll do so. But there is 89 of them. So we got to move through them. Uh, in January, we've got, uh, starting things off, uh, The Dig, which is coming out on January 15th, limited, uh, followed by a Netflix premiere on, on January 29th. Not familiar with this, based on true events in 1939, about an archaeologist. That's about it for January, so... <laughs> yeah, there's not much coming out this month. No, go and watch Wonder Woman. Uh, February, we've got the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. Uh, Hell that, yeah, I'll watch that. The only yeah. thing i got to say about this is that the animation of this looks really freaky now, it looks like, like I don't, Feb 21 I don't like on VOD and CBS All Access the last movie was like that as well the one on Netflix yeah no I'm I, like the first movie was cool but like the I just don't like the animation it looks it, it's freaky and it's really that's funny. what I mean like the, the animation for this is a movie that came out last year on Netflix with the same animation style yeah not a fan 2 out of 10 uh, let's see February 5th we've got Cinderella not Disney Cinderella, I don't think. This has got Camilla Cabello, Billy Porter, Indian, Indina Menzel, directed by yeah. Kay Cannon. No, nothing about this. Adele Dazeem. Yeah. This is funny too because Billy, like Billy Porter, who's um he is in Pose, um like the TV show. He's playing. He's the one playing the fairy godmother. So I think that's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's Loki. going to be great. Uh, we've got Malcolm and Marie, Feb fifth on Netflix. Not familiar with that. Then we've got Feb 12th, Judas and the Black Messiah, with simultaneous release on HBO Max. A few names in that one. Yeah, um, Lakeith Stanfield, Jesse Plemons, Daniel Kalua, Martin Sheen, Little Rail from he was in Get Out. This sounds like it's gonna be awesome. Like it's based on the um the Black Panther party. Movement, yeah. Also Feb yeah. 12th on Netflix, you've got To All the Boys Always and Forever. Also Another is... Noah Centiano film for uh Toby to get behind since he's playing He Man. Yeah. <laughs> the silence. <laughs> <laughs> you know I had to I'd rather you bring back Dolph Lundgren to be honest like at this stage it's gotta be better than this kid you know I had to do it to him oh fuck I could bench this guy with my my fucking pinky finger <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible uh, I care a lot Feb 9 Netflix uh, Rosemary Pike I don't know these people oh Peter Dinklage right yep okay uh, comedy of a con woman who takes windows of the elderly uh, out of their money blah 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 alright cool uh, Nomad Land. Feb 19. Yep. So this is actually directed by Chloe Zhao, who's doing yep. The Eternals. Yeah. This is also apparently a massive awards contender. So this could be a um, like a real dark horse because this, I hadn't heard of this until like a week or two ago, and it's apparently blowing up everywhere. Yeah. Well, it, it so, was um, it was what in, it's really what got her the Eternals job, uh, from what I'm yes. reading here. So yes, that's correct. Disney was very impressed. Anthony Hopkins, who's about 475,000 years old, is is coming out in another film uh, on February 26. The Father, also with uh, Olivia, Olivia Colman. Wow, I love her. Yep, its Great. story focuses an aging man struggling with memory loss whose daughter moves into his fight to help care for him. So it's going to be one of those emotional things that'll make you boil your eyes out at the end. Feb 26, oh, the you're going to see Tom and Jerry. Simultaneous release on HBO Max. 
You got Chloe Grace Botez doing some of the voices and others. Uh, March 5th, we get uh, Coming to America on Amazon Prime with uh, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. That'll be good. Looks good. I've seen the trailer. We've talked about it. March 5th, we also get uh, Raya the Last Dragon. Uh, very, very for excited for this. You want this one? Yeah. Oh, I'm not. I just, I just want to talk about how amazing it, like, it looks, and just this is probably going to be. I, this will probably be a dark horse contender for like movie of the year, I reckon, because it's it looks amazing. Yeah. It, like, it's on, amazing, and it, it could, it could possibly be the new How to Train Your Dragon. It's dropping on a Disney Plus premiere as well, isn't it? No yes, mention. That's of correct. It. Yeah. yeah, it could be, but there's no mention of it in here. Yeah, it's, it's, no, they announced um at the Disney investor meeting it was dropping on Disney Premier Plus it was going to be the next movie to do that so right uh, March 12th I'm looking forward to this one The King's Man I think that's already been pushed back oh okay oh has it I think so apparently there's like no marketing popping up for it now so they think it's going to get pushed back again right, okay well at this stage that's the date and may change uh, of course look any any and all of this is subject to change thanks to covid but uh, i've saw the trailer for this a while back and um, i i liked where this was going um with ralph fiends i think it's pronounced uh yeah ralph fine. fines yeah uh one yeah, you boys I'm... obviously looking forward to march 26 godzilla versus kong simultaneous release on hbo max which Hell means yeah. you totally won't be able to just pirate the shit out of this and watch it at home Give it not, to me right now. Not that you I'll will go anyway. to the cinema anyway. You I want to see that at the, the cinema. Screen. Oh, I know you will. I know you will. I don't Fucking think I can even get through, through the wall. I don't think I even finished watching the last Godzilla film, to be honest. Do it. Do it. Nah, Do, it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, this Do is it. this is a film that's been banged around for a while and had uh, some problems, and that's um, No Time to Die, which is the next 007 movie. It's at this stage uh, in for yeah. April second, twenty twenty one. But I mean, it's, it's it's it got filmed and finished ages ago, if I'm not mistaken. No, they only finished. They finished filming it right before COVID, because Daniel Craig broke both his legs. <laughs> Poor bugger. This is going to be a first session for me. I'm going to see this no matter what. I love Bond. It's my favorite. April second, Peter Rabbit two, The Runaway. Yeah, it'll have an audience. April sixteenth, we get uh, Mortal Kombat with a simultaneous release on HBO Max. Fucking a, keen yeah, for that. Very, very so. excited. Uh, BIOS, Tom Hanks. April 16. I, what is this? Sickly um, Inventor. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like robot. It's kind of like a um, I Am Legend type deal, except it's more of a futuristic-y type thing. Mm. Um, so. Uh, yeah. A Quiet Place Part 2, April 23, 2021. Well, hopefully they get the fucking physics and logic and everything sorted out this time. Just, I don't care. Just live next to the fucking waterfall. I don't care. Just give me more of the monsters. Just... Yeah. To be fair, I mean, I mean, I don't mind watching Emily Blunt. I think she's an amazing actress. So. And I like John Krasinski too. So you know, I just, just you know, tighten up the script, guys. Come on. Uh, last night in Soho, April twenty-three. Uh, Edgar Wright. Yeah. Edgar Wright. Yeah. April twenty-three also sees Ron's Gone Wrong. Don't know much about this. The star, the starring still TBD on this information here. It's a Disney. Phil? No, it's a few months later. Yeah, animated adventure set in a world where every child's best friend is a digitally connected device. So that's terrible. Uh, May 7th, Black Widow. At last. Crikey. Like almost a year later, isn't it? Yeah, year to the day. Just about. Yeah, well, there you go. So looking forward to finally going off to the cinema and watching that. Yep, very uh, excited. Another one I've been waiting for uh, Free Guy, coming out May 21st. Uh, yep. Ryan Reynolds. Uh, Taika Waititi directed by Sean Levy we've spoken about this so you should know what it is you should be excited another one that you uh, gents are very excited yeah. about on May 21st is Spiral. Spiral Chris Rock Samuel Jackson this is the uh, the next Saw film basically yeah, yeah. Uh, and the trailer looked good I'm really keen to see Rock in a non-comedic role I think he's going to do it really well well he, he produced it I think co-wrote it as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. co-wrote yeah. it yeah May 28th, we've got Cruella, uh, starring Emma, Emma Stone, and obviously we know it. this is a live-action remake of, you know, uh, well, in. same universe as 101 Dalmatians, so, but obviously yeah. focusing on the character of Cruella. DeVille, should it's be good, Emma Stone's a good actress. It's the prequel yeah. to, like, 101 Dalmatians, it's her when she's, like, in her, young, like her late 20s or something. May 28th sees release of F9, Fast and Furious 9. Jesus, oh, stop. Oh, hell stop. yes. I'm so it. keen. Stop. We're on it. So keen. Nah. 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 There's still, there's still, there's one more after this. I know. 
Two yep, more. They're going, Two more. They're going to 11? I thought they were yeah, going to 11. Seven. No, they're going to 11. Terrible. Let's get into June. June 4th. The Conjuring. The Devil made me do it. Uh, yep, Keen. Vera for Keen. me, yeah. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Uh, obviously, it's it's not Juan directing. It's Michael Chavez. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Because some of that, that, that Conjuring Universe stuff has been bloody terrible. So, the mainline entries, though, are incredible. They have been. They have been. But we'll see. So that's Sorry. June 4th with a simultaneous release on HBO Max. Uh, June 4th, uh, a movie called Vivo by yep. Kirk Dimitro. Dimitro? Dimitro? Um, it's the, it's the Lin Manuel Miranda um, musical animated film that he's doing for Sony. Right, right. Not um, that I would know anything that Lin Manuel Miranda's doing. I'm not a fan at all. Not at all. June 11th, no, we're going to finally get our hands on Ghostbusters Afterlife, directed by Jason Rittman, um, starring Carrie Coon, and Finn Wolfhard, Mackenzie Grace, Paul Rudd. I'm cautiously optimistic. John Chu is directed In the Heights, coming out June 18, simultaneous release on HBO Max. Anthony yep, Ramos, Leslie is, Grace, Corey Hawkins, Jimmy Smith, etc., etc. This, this is a um, adaption of Lin Manuel Miranda's musical before Hamilton. Not yeah, so very good. I'm excited for this as well. No doubt. Pixar have got Luca coming out June 18, 2021. Personal coming of age tale with a twist from director Enrico Cosa. Cosa Rosa. Uh, it focuses on the character of Luca, who lives on the Italian Riviera and strikes up a friendship with another boy who is secretly a sea monster disguised as a human. As you do. June 25th, though, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Starring Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams, Woody Harrelson, and Naomi Harris. Yes, keen for this one. Directed by Andy Serkis. So I expect a lot of (laughs) mocap. June 30th, Zola. Don't know anything about this. Um, based the on Arnim notori- Zola from uh, Captain America. It's definitely not. Based on a notoriously stranger <laughs> than fiction series of viral tweets and a subsequent Rolling Stone article from 2015, this adventure comedy follows a Detroit waitress who barked on a road trip oh. to Florida with a stripper and ended up spending the craziest two days of life with her. I know, about the, I know about the tweets to this. I didn't know they were making this into a movie. Well, there you go. Hell yeah. July 2nd, Minions, The Rise of Gru. You'll either love it or you'll hate it. July 2nd, we're going to get <laughs> Top Gun <laughs> Maverick uh, with Jennifer Connelly, Tom Cruise, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer is confirmed. Good, good. Yeah. Um, uh, in the trailer. Yeah, I'll, I'll see it. Too? I'll see it at some point. Maybe in a home I'll, release. I, I'd only watch it for Jennifer Connelly. No other reason. But... Yeah. July 9th, we're getting The Forever Purge. That series has just kept kicking on and on and on and on, hasn't it? Oh, it has. Hasn't lost a step. TV the shows one, and all the rest of it. Mean, I haven't seen the newer ones, but apparently the, the newer ones are also like just as good as the first couple. July 9th is a big one because we get Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, Marvel Hell film. Yeah. So we've spoken <clears throat> about that. We know what to expect. We're all keen. July 16th, Space Jam 2. Mm, mixed feelings on this one for some people, With I think. LeBron. Very LeBron excited. James, James, Don Cheadle. I'm excited. From yeah? basically, okay. from, from, from what I've heard of the film, like it's... It's going to be very different, but very much like the first film. Like, I, I don't know how much I can say, but mm. there's there's going to be some very interesting things. There, there was a little point. bit of footage in that uh, HBO trailer that got released yesterday. There, there was, but yeah. there's not the, the things that I've heard. <laughs> oh, okay. July 16th, Uncharted. Yeah, Uncharted doesn't need, and Space doesn't, need, doesn't need an introduction. Everybody knows what's going on there. We'll all be waiting for it. Uh, July 23rd, uh, Old from M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, newest project yeah, is shrouded is... in mystery, but it's sure to be worth the wait. So we don't know a lot about it, according to this, anyway. Then, uh, July 30th, The Green Knight. So that's actually this based on the original Sir Gawain and the Green Knight story. This looks awesome. Yeah, yeah it should be interesting. July 30th, Jungle Cruise. Dwayne Johnson, Emily Blunt. time. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to that. Looks looks like a lot of fun. Uh, August, Hotel Transylvania 4. Please stop. This one's got Adam Sandler. Um... <laughs> Like, the first one wasn't good, and they just haven't got any better. Oh, I actually went to the third one and saw that in the cinemas with... I'm um, really sorry to hear that for you, man. Are you okay? We, we went with my partner's niece, and um, I... It was fun. It was dumb, but it was fun. Nah, like that's, that's all those, that's all those movies are. They're for kids, man. Like, they don't have to be, you well, know, psycho-level psycho writing, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, good. It's, it's not for you. <laughs> August 6th, uh, Suicide Squad, James Gunn, Suicide Squad, Margot Robbie, and everybody else that we know is in there. Heaps of people. Jai Courtney, John yep. Cena, Peter Capaldi, Sylvester Stallone, Viola Davis. Everybody's in there. Uh, big, like one. One, of the, one of the few movies that hasn't been affected by COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, still the release date from when it was announced. Yeah, it hasn't changed. Um, 
And then it'll also be a simultaneous release in HBO Max at this stage. We'll see if that gets backpedaled or not. Uh, August 13th, Deep Water, directed by Adrian Lin, got Ben Affleck in it. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, a novel by Patricia Highsmith about a married couple at odds with each other who begin to play dangerous mind games with each other, eventually leading to murder. Okay, so a thriller, cool. August 13th, we've got Respect by Lyle Tommy, directed, starring Jennifer Hudson, Forrest Whitaker. What's going on here? It's a, bi it's a biopic about the legendary singer in Respect. Okay. Yeah, Aretha Franklin. This is the Jennifer Hudson's playing right. Aretha Franklin. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. August twentieth, we've got the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. This is just getting silly now. Ryan Reynolds, Samuel Jackson, <laughs> Samuel Hayek, Morgan Freeman, Richard Grant, Antonio Banderas. Like, it's a good cast. Have I haven't you, watched have the original. The no, I haven't watched the original. Watch the first one. It's very funny. Fair enough. Uh, August twenty seventh, we get the sequel, Candyman, which I think Peel's actually producing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I didn't mind the originals. I thought they were pretty pretty spooky in, in their own unique way. So, um, yeah, this will be interesting. I'll, again, I'll, I'll, it'll be a home release for me, but um, yeah, looks interesting. Uh, and then August 27th, we get uh, Peter Jackson's The Beatles Get Back, which we already discussed in, in this earlier episode of this earlier in this episode. Uh, September, Jackass 4, which I know you guys will be keen on, September 3rd. This, this one <laughs> could be moving date because Johnny Knoxville again, I think, broke both his legs during making this as well. So, yeah, <laughs> this, this very well could also move its date. Yeah, September seventeenth, the Boss Baby family business. They're still doing these. Why? Talk about friends. It should Kids be fucking movies. scary. And this one I'm looking forward to. September seventeenth, Death of the Nile. So this is Kenneth Brenner's, um, you know, Hercule Poirot already... series. Yeah, Gal Gadot's in this one. Uh, Army Hammer, Annette Bening, Le Rose Leslie, Letitia Wright. Yeah, Tommy Hammer. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, I thought the first one was very well done, so keen keen to watch this one. September twenty fourth, with a simultaneous release in HBO Max, The Many Saints of Newark, directed by Alan Taylor. What do you know about this one? The Sopranos prequel. Right there, you go. Yep, yep, looks right. like it. With um, what's his name? Gandolfini's son is going to be playing his character as a younger. You know, like a younger version of his character, right? Yeah, from the show, like it's it's actually going to be um, James Gandolfini's son playing, Makes sense. Yep. playing soprano. So uh, October first, big one, June. Uh, at this stage, simultaneous release on oh, HBO Max. We'll see. You shut your dirty whore mouth! <laughs> you shut that dirty whore mouth! <laughs> nah, looks good. Looks good. M Keen, M Keen. Uh, it's got Batista, so you have to watch it, right? Oh, and yeah, and it's yeah. got it's got um. You don't um, tell me. It's got Zendaya it's, as well, like you know. The, internet, the internet's husband, Jason Momoa. Yeah, yeah right. Um, October eighth, Mo, uh, Morbius, Lido. Very interested to see this. Yeah, I'm keen on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. October yeah. fifteen, Halloween Kills, Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, keen. Anthony Michael Hall. So uh, this is a sequel to the previous Halloween film, which in itself was a sequel to the very, very first film. Yeah. So this will be a cinema one. Uh, October 15th, we also get The Last Duel, directed by Ridley Scott, starring Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Adam Driver, Jodie Comer, big cast, big director. This is a Edwardian tale of knights and maidens. Oh, I haven't heard about this at all. Yeah. Yeah. But that cast is huge. Yeah, like, right. Damon, Affleck, yeah. Driver, and Corner. Yeah, it's just... It's, oh, yeah, Corner was yeah, in Yeah, Affleck got... and Damon are like brothers who are like warring against each other or something like that. Yeah, good casting there. October 22nd, we've got Snake Eyes. Uh, I don't know much about this. Directed by Robert Schwentke. This is yeah, the... from G.I. Joe. It's spin-off. Yeah. Ah. No, it's, it's the prequel. Again, it's it's his backstory as to how he became Snake Eyes in the G.I. Joe universe. They, they don't have Ray Park. It's not Ray Park playing him. Like, why the fuck do you even bother? No, it's uh, Henry Golding, who's been... Yeah, yeah Henry Golding, yeah. ...for himself lately, so... Um, sounds like they want to give this character legs, and putting Henry Golding in the role like makes a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah. Uh, moving into November, on the fifth we have an untitled Elvis film uh, directed by Baz Luhrmann, um, starring Austin Butler and Tom Hanks. That yeah, was filmed here in Australia. That's why Tom Hanks got COVID. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it'll do well. And of course, the, the big one for for everybody else that's not a music lover, uh, November fifth is Eternals. Um, yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Need an introduction. November 19th, Mission Impossible 7. Is this the one where he goes to space, or is that the next one? Uh, no, no, it's, it's a completely separate film. Uh, it's not Mission right. Impossible. Yeah, no, that's a different film. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. But there's no doubt that he's probably going to get close to the fucking atmosphere. Yeah, in the stratosphere. So, like, December. All right, so not a lot in November, but, I mean, you got Eternals, so, I mean, you know, what else do you want? Uh, December, we've got West Side Story, directed by Steven Spielberg. 
and it's a adaptation of the Broadway musical. I guess it will probably be pretty good. Untitled Spider-Man sequel. Well, yeah, but Spider-Man Homecoming 3 is what we're sort of calling it, or Spider-Man 3, December 17th. No need for an introduction there, but December 22nd, you also get The Matrix 4 at this stage. Simultaneous release on HBO Max. Again, you really don't need an introduction for that. You know what it is. You know what you're getting yourself into. Should be good. Looking forward to it. Going to have a good Christmas, hopefully. December 22nd, Sing 2. What's interesting is director still to be determined. Okay. Uh, but they got the cast all there. This is interesting. December 22nd, apparently we're going to get uh, Sherlock Holmes 3. Robert Downey Jr., Jude Law, Rachel McAdams. Directed by Dexter Fletcher. So no Guy Ritchie. But, no, um, that, yeah. that, that hasn't even started the filming yet. Didn't Rachel McAdams die in the second one anyway? So. She died in the yeah. first, second one. No, you're no, right. She second did, one, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's so what's um, about this is in October last year, Dexter Fletcher said that this film was on the back burner. Yeah, like, there so... was no plans to even start production on this. So the fact that this is still dated, yeah, is I don't really... know, man. I don't know. Take it up with yeah. take it up with Rotten Tomatoes. Don't know. Yeah, December twenty fifth, Babylon, directed by Damien Chazelle, Emma Stone in talks, Brad Pitt. In this talks. one, uh, huge, huge cast on this one. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Right. Yeah. Uh, Emma Stone, Brad Pitt have entered talks to start steering in the film. Blah 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 blah. So long way off. And then the last one on this, well, before we get into To Be Determined, uh, is Gamora Del Toro's new film, Nightmare Alley, with Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett, William Defoe, Tony Collette, Richard Jenkins, Ron Perlman, and Rooney Mara. Get a load of that cast. Uh, oh, cast. You're right. Um, I'm surprised Ron Perlman's there. The story revolves around a manipulative calm, uh, carnival hustler who hooks up with a female psychiatrist who is even more dangerous than he is. Doesn't have a specific release date yet, says this, but a recent tweet by Searchlight Pictures announced it would be released in December of 2021, so one can hope. And then there's a few, there's actually quite a few to be determined here. I'm just going to bang through these pretty quickly because we're running out of time. Uh, Army of the Dead, directed by Zack Snyder, to be determined on Netflix. Uh, Blonde, uh, Andrew Dominic, Netflix. Concrete Cowboy, directed by Ricky Storm, Netflix. Uh, Don't Look Up, directed by Adam McKay. Got DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Rob Morgan, Joanna. Oh, that's Depp. the big cast one. Yeah, Timothy Chalamet, Chalamet uh, Ariana Grande, coming on Netflix. Yeah, looks big. Escape from Spiderhead, directed by Joseph Kosinski. It's got Chris Hemsworth. That's um, actually filming down the Gold uh, Coast right now. I was going to yeah. say, Lucas, you got anything to say about that? Uh, no. No. <laughs> but I will say that, yeah, uh, this one's been filming down the Gold Coast. Apparently, it's supposed to come out middle of the year. Right. Lost I heard. Uh, the Guilty, directed by Antonio Fuqua. I think I've pronounced that, hopefully pronounced that. It's got Jake Gyllenhaal in it, uh, Peter Sarsgaard. The Harder They Fall, directed by James Samuel, Samuel uh, to be determined on Netflix. This has got Idris Elba, uh, Jonathan Majors, Zazie Beetz. Yeah, looks all oh, right. What? Yeah. Jonathan uh, Majors is playing Kang, Zazie Beetz, Lakia Stanfield, Delroy Lindo, Regina King. Damn, it's got a good cast. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, the Power of the Dog, directed by Jane Campion. Uh, it's coming on Netflix. This has got Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst, uh, a few others. Uh, Red Notice, with starring Dwayne Johnson, Gal Gadot, Ryan Reynolds. So another decent cast. Directed by uh, Rawson Marshall Thurber. <clears throat> Tick, Tick, Boom. Directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. It's got Andrew Garfield, who I like. Uh, Alexandra Shipp, Robin DeJesus, Vanessa Hudgens. Uh, Rugrats movie. TBD, hey, TBD, TBD. I don't know about this. Directed by oh, David Bell. Live Bells. action live action what the fuck yeah live know. action version of Rugrats okay there's also the Clifford the Big Red Dog movie coming up this year that's on the list as well unless yep. it's further yeah probably further Antlers directed by Scott Cooper oh Carrie Antlers Russell. can't wait for that yeah looks good looks good Masters of the Universe uh, starring to be determined yeah that's right keep it that way keep it that way <laughs> keep determining <laughs> keep determining Timothy Chalamet, geez, his career is just exploding right now. Uh, the French Dispatch, some, due out some point in 2020, directed by Wes Anderson. Uh, looks very art housey. Um, all Wes Anderson films do. Yeah. Uh, we got Matt Damon and Abigail Breslin, Camille Cotton, uh, starring in Stillwater from Tom McCarthy. Escape Room 2, directed by Adam Robitel. Not a lot of info. Wicked, directed by Stephen Daldry. Uh, Black Adam, to be determined, but we know it's got Dwayne Johnson in it, and that's about it. It is the um, stage production of the Wicked Witch of the West. Ah, excellent. Yeah, they're doing a they're doing a live action film. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Blazing Samurai, directed by Chris Bailey and Mark Koitzer, uh, starring Sam Jackson, Michael Cera, others, George Takai. Originally slated for release in 2017. Now it looks like it's coming out in 2021. Inspired by the Mel Brooks classic western Blazing Saddles, obviously. I was going to say, 
Blazing yeah. Samurai is yeah. related to Blazing Saddles. Yeah. And Pinocchio, Brooks is- which we know is directed by Gil Demoro, Del Toro, and Mark Gustafsson, starring TBD, but I believe we've confirmed Tom Hanks is uh, lined up for it, so... Tom Hanks one? I thought he was doing the no, Disney one. No, 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 Tom Hanks is doing the Disney one. This that's is right. One. My apologies. Yes, that's right. Yep, yep, yep. So that's everything in this list. We'll have a link to that in the article. Long list. So, what's coming? Well, we already know. We've got we've got WandaVision. More of that's coming. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984 is in cinemas, but not a lot else happening, I don't think, in the remainder of January at this stage. Yeah, not that I can think of. No, but there's enough there to keep you busy. Cobra Kai Season 3, it said WandaVision's coming out. You can go and see Wonder Woman at the cinema. Yeah, it's 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 getting there. It's getting there. The cogs are definitely turning. I, I, I feel like we're regardless of covid i feel like um you know production companies are pushing through and getting stuff done so should hopefully be a good year and at least for us in australia we're lucky enough we'll be able to get down to the cinema and watch this stuff on the big screen fingers crossed can't wait but that's about all we've got time for in this episode so i'd like to thank uh ethan and lucas for joining me in this episode as always appreciate it gents yeah good love it and uh all good i think uh, i'd like to thank our patreon supporters for helping making this podcast possible Thank you to everybody who's listened and listening and continues to listen. We don't know why you do, but we appreciate it. And uh, we should be back, hopefully, in the next two to three weeks uh, with another episode. And uh, I think for the song, this this episode, why don't you cough us out, Ethers, with some, with some COVID coughing. <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>